G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's review is going to feature uh, a piece from a brand that again I haven't featured before, Lempho, Chinese brand. Uh, and, and this actually is a smartwatch. So pretty much the first smartwatch I've touched in the entire range of videos I've done on this channel. This one is a new collaboration piece. This is from TomTop, uh, a online uh, retailer mainly of uh, I think electronics. Uh, they reached out and you know offered to send some pieces. So I looked through and thought, you know, why not I do a smartwatch? You know, yes, I'm not a, a gadget channel, but you know, it is a wristwatch, so why not? So let's get into this. This is uh, so a cardboard box, you know, nothing more special than that, kind of just this dark colored cardboard. And here is the piece. So let's just get it out. Uh, I'll just put that aside first, all right? So just a bit of foam and then card underneath to show you the rest uh, and hide it under there. So that's the charging cable. Uh, a basic kind of like uh, instruction, there's nothing else in there. So very, very basic instruction. I think they expect you to kind of uh, look most of this up online. Uh, there's really not much in here except for the, you know, the bare basic uh, functions that they, they do cover. Uh, and there's a QR code there for downloading uh, an app. Uh, but for iOS users, you, you don't actually download an app. There is no app. Uh, for Android, there is, uh, but iOS, you just connect directly with Bluetooth and it, it starts uh, uh, connecting the appropriate functions. So first up, let's just show you quickly this charging cable before I put it away. So that's the charging points there. And this is the cable and it kind of right, nicely connects with a magnetic uh, click there. And uh, it's not super tight, right? If you give it a slight tug, it will come uh, apart, but you know, it's good enough for you to just leave it on your desk and plug this into a USB port to charge the phone. Um, it, it takes about, just about an hour on a, a standard port on a computer. So I assume that's a, a five watt port on my uh, computer that will charge this up in an hour. So not, not too long. So put a charging cable aside and just show you the watch specifically now. Uh, so this is the Lempho LEM6 3G smartwatch, and that's the default screen that you can see there. Um, I'm unsure exactly what the MSRP of this watch is. It's hard to find, but the usual sale price I can find on many sites range between about 120 to 150, and I'll put links that I can find, uh, including, of course, the, the link of the collaboration site TomTop. Um, so again, I'm not a technical uh, gadget channel, so I don't review electronics as such, uh, but I will mainly uh, aim to cover the, the functionalities of this watch. So most of the functionalities, I will focus, of course, on the wristwatch side of things. So watch function wise, okay, what do we have here? 52 millimeters diameter case here, okay? It's plastic, right? It's not metal by any means, so don't let, uh, uh, any of the sites mislead you. Some sites have said metal alloy, but it's not. It's actually a plastic case. Uh, 17 millimeters on the thickness and 24 millimeter is the lug width that you can see there. Uh, the lug to lug, so that distance there is 60 millimeters. So pretty sizable, but it's plastic and rubber strap. So it is only 95 grams on the wrist, you know, very light and something that, you know, is very comfortable to wear. Uh, the band, just to cover that quickly, is stitched silicon rubber, okay, all the way. Uh, pretty plain, nothing much uh, more about it, but it's a pretty nice supple uh, rubber silicon and it's got actually a steel buckle in contrast to the black plastic of the case there. Okay, now onto the display and you can see uh, it, I, I do have the, the wrist activation on. So as you turn it towards you on the wrist, it will kind of flick the display on. So that, that's a very nice uh, and very key useful feature to have without which uh, this becomes much less usable. There are 24 default displays. So just to show you, this is the default uh, first one, right? It's got kind of this uh, sub-dial look to it uh, and the uh, date in the uh, three o'clock window. So kind of like mimicking, uh, I, I guess, a mechanical wristwatch. But to change the face, you just kind of click it down. Right, the second face is actually kind of their second default. I suppose it's kind of a Casio G-Shock uh, type of look. So you've got the weather down at the bottom quadrant there. And then in the circle, it's actually, uh, I think that's the battery charge level. Uh, and then you've got the day date and the digital time display. And of course, the analog hands in the middle. Uh, and then I'll just show you some of my favorites. So the third one actually has become one of my favorites, right? It's monochromatic. 
Uh, but take a look at it. It's just mesmerizing. I, I like this one. It's got no other data on there, right? It's got no day, date, anything else, but I, I, I like this one. And let's just flick through. Uh, this one is a fantasy one. You know, fire and ice and sword, I suppose. Pretty mesmerizing. And let me just show you this one here. This one's very interesting, I find. Right, chronograph look. Omega Speedmaster Racing, in fact, I, I think this is what this is mimicking, uh, but it's not a chronograph, that's actually just a sub dial showing bits of the time there, you know, seconds and seconds, uh, large seconds and sub dial there, it's the same display. So, so it's not actually a chronograph display. I, I don't know why they didn't do it, they could have easily made it a chronograph, I think. And then lastly, I just want to show one of the other ones, uh, this one here, right, this, this uh, display is specifically one that has the pedometer display there. So on the bottom left, right, and the heart rate, last heart rate marking there, 85. So this one, I can't, I guess it's kind of like a health uh, activity tracker type of display. Okay, so that's it for the displays. Let's just flick it back to the original. Okay, the actual functions I want to, to mention mainly uh, is, is the palming bright screen. So that again is the the function where you turn it and towards you and it, it comes on that they call it palming bright which is an interesting uh, type of a uh, word so as you flick up um, I can show you this is the battery charge and date there uh, and then you've got the Bluetooth and whatnot uh, Wi-Fi this one is the kind of the functions so you can turn on Bluetooth Wi-Fi uh, this is the palming bright screen right so I, I would just call it you know, screen on on wrist rotation. Why not just say that? But they, they call it palming bright screen. That's what that is. And then a uh, uh, power saving mode, one, two, three, in terms of different default uh, brightnesses that you can set there. So that's the quick access screen. This one's a clean screen to, to shut off all your apps. And then this one's the weather display. So that those are the quick access stuff, which is pretty neat, you know, I think pretty sensible. Uh, that little bubble you see there that's a notification icon so you know this is what will come when you pair your watch and to see what notifications are on I swipe down and these are kind of like uh, oh, I've got nothing else on now but the, the, these are you know they come on here you can scroll through them if you have notifications all right that's really uh, the watch function let me just uh, put it on for the wrist shot quickly for you and there we have the 52 millimeter size plastic case 17 millimeter stick on my 17 centimeter uh, wrist here so uh, just quickly uh, going back to the home screen you always press that button I want to show you the main button function so this one is actually quick access for the heart rate and let me just measure uh, the heart rate now okay so so as a skin sensor it quickly gives you a heart rate monitoring. You know, that took about what, about 12 seconds, I think, or 15 seconds, okay? So that, that's the reading. Uh, this one quick accesses uh, a compass, right? And that, that's reasonably calibrated, I think, as far as I've uh, uh, experienced. All right, home button again. All right, get it off the wrist there, and let's just cover uh, the gadget bits now. So. Uh, for those who are interested in the gadget side of things, this one is a MTK6580 uh, processor, 1 gigahertz, 1.0 gigahertz, quad core is what I'm told. The, the display is actually 1.4 inch active matrix OLED, so AMOLED, I suppose you can say as the uh, abbreviation, 400 by 400 pixel. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's pretty good. I mean, it's probably not quite as sharp as some others, but Overall, I think it is a pretty good display uh, for what it is capable of doing, you know, full color uh, and whatnot. Uh, touch screen, as you've seen me use it. It's got one gigabyte of internal RAM as well as 16 gigabyte of internal storage. So, you know, it, it's equivalent of a, a lot of uh, base model uh, smartphones that you may see on the market. The water rating is IP67, which actually means it's uh, resistant to accidental submersion. So it's splash resistant, and if you drop it into water, it's capable of withstanding one meter of depth for up to 30 minutes. That's really what that IP67 rating is. Connectivity-wise, it's got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. It's got a nano SIM, right? So right there, you can flick that out and put a nano SIM card and then make it uh, to uh, have phone functionality. It is only a 3G capable phone functionality and it's also got GPS uh, capability built right in here. 
At the back, take a look. That's the wrist heart rate monitor based on the light reflection of the skin uh, and the capillaries under the skin, I think, in terms of how it works. A dedicated compass button, you've already seen that. And then uh, a pedometer, which I kind of alluded to. So flicking through the, the functionality. So the phone ones are, you know, dialing, contacts, SMS that you can do. Heart rate monitor, which you can quick access on that button anyway. And then the sport function, which actually has the pedometer. So you can actually kind of like go through here and you can see, well, I've only barely used this today, which is 12 steps, but there is a pedometer function, right? Estimates the distance. And I think there is a calorie estimate on the sports function as well, if you want to use that measurement. Moving on, LimFit, I believe is the app. If you use an Android phone, that, that's what you would connect with. But I, I use iOS, so that doesn't apply to me. And then second last would be apps. And under the default apps, you have many of the main stuff, you know, weather, alarms, music recorder, uh, music player, sound recorder, a calendar function and app store and whatnot. And, and importantly, there's a built-in browser. So just want to show you how it works here. So hopefully you can hear some of the sound that it is coming through. I can turn that up a little bit more, uh, but not a huge amount more. Okay. So that's really uh, the functionality. You can see uh, it's not optimized for this phone. You know, you're looking at really a computer screen, which is a, you know, quadrilateral on a circular screen. So that's just somewhat suboptimal or really quite suboptimal in terms of functionality here. Okay. So going backwards again, Right, just take you through the last thing after the apps is settings. And connectivity wise, just to quickly show you, you, you kind of just go to connect and under Bluetooth, uh, you can see already, you, you kind of turn on your Bluetooth, make sure your, your phone is visible and then pair it up. And when you get your phone, what you would do, of course, is again, turn on your Bluetooth and you can see that the LEM iOS that's actually connected. And once it's connected, that's it. It just starts working. The notifications you have on your notification screen will get pushed to the watch and that would buzz or alarm uh, as you see fit. You know, you can choose that in settings. All right, so just as a quick uh, thing about how that works. Okay, so what else have I got to say about this? Um, the, the smartphone, you know, part of this really, uh, you, you've, you've seen me go through to the uh, settings and apps here. Right, there is a Google Play Store, right? Um, and, and which means that you can download any number of apps, right? The, the potential is unlimited, right? It's got internet connection if you put uh, the Nano SIM in or if you connect to your Wi-Fi or in fact, if you Bluetooth to your phone, you've got internet connectivity, you've got unlimited apps that you can download, but the actual apps that have been designed for this watch are actually quite limited. You can, uh, you can download smartphone apps, but of course they are not dedicated, not designed for this, which means that you're going to struggle using it on this little round screen when it was actually designed for a much uh, bigger screen. Okay, so that, that's really it. That's what I have to say uh, about this watch. What have I enjoyed about it? Well, I think it's got a really good display. You know, I've really enjoyed this, you know, for the price, you know, for the package. It's really quite nice looking, you know, as well as the you know, particularly the options, you know, that you can have here. And I'll just put this one on, my, my current favorite one on. Um, you know, it's got a sporty style. It's very light and comfortable. It's not super durable because it's plastic. It doesn't feel like it's going to be very durable against uh, abuse. Uh, but, you know, it, it's good enough. It's got a very, you know, pretty nice band and it's very soft, subtle and comfortable, I would say. And it's a bit large, you know, I, I actually wear it you know, on the smallest hole there. So, you know, it seems to be designed for much bigger people than me, you know, two more inches on the rinse, uh, wrist there. Um, and it's got some very nice display choices, you know, for, for people who are, uh, who are conscious about your display choices. It's simply packed with features, but, you know, it's it's got some weaknesses, right? Like other smartwatches, it's got effectively one day battery life. Despite the unlimited potential of the apps, uh, its potential is limited by the small screen, very small keyboard if you're going to start typing. The speech may work better, but I, I haven't really pushed to use the speech and, and try that out. Limited customized apps and the screen accuracy is not very high, right? There's relatively low touchscreen accuracy. So if you're 
typing, that can be a bit frustrating, at least that's what I've found. And then of course the case uh, I've mentioned is plastic and, and that does cheapen it a bit. You know, I think if they came up with a metal alloy one, that would certainly uh, you know, up the ante on where this may sit in terms of competition. Why would I use it? Well, style, I think it's fair. The face choices is a nice uh, gimmick. Uh, the pedometer, that kind of can be useful, I think. And then the heart rate gimmick, I guess, you know, one-off heart rate measures can be a nice little gimmick to have. Uh, I think you might have be able to get apps, but I haven't tried that. And then uh, lastly, I think the weather may be something that can come in handy, but you do need Wi-Fi or internet connectivity to update that. Otherwise, it's just a static reading. So guys, there we have it. That's my view of this watch, this uh, Lenfo LEM6 3G smartphone. It's been a bit of a long review, but I tried to cover most of the features. Let me know what you think. Uh, most of you who follow this channel probably don't use smartwatches, I'm guessing, but let me know what you think of smartwatches in general. Lenfo, if you have any of their products, I'd like to hear uh, your particular experiences. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. I put out new content weekly, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you for sticking with me as always, and I will see you next time.